When we did the timing chain on this engine, it, we were informed to set the little P mark here, and which would have been up here, in line with this bolt hole here. And also, the, cams got, the camshaft sprocket, the keyway, has got six places to put the, um, the sprocket on, because it's like a vernier, because these were made for a diesel, so the diesel had to be really accurately timed. No problems there. However, if you remember the last section when we did the cylinder head on this, we had the pistons at top dead centre, and this was the thing that was throwing me. Because now, when the pistons at top dead centre, the P is down here, not up here. So that meant the engine would be 180 degrees out. This is odd. This is very, very odd. And it threw me a little bit, but you can see probably by the the position here for the cam for this front uh, pulley, this is on the marker where the top dead centre would be, which is correct. So this I have no problem with. But the, in the book, what it says is this, and this is crucial. You set the you set the skew gear on top dead centre, and the way to check that is with number three and four cylinder. The valves are rocking. Now I'm going to show you that now because this is the way I usually set valves up. I just do two turns of the engine and we can set all the valves. You don't need to mess about too much. But um, because this is what's called a half speed cam, so the relationship between this and the, the crankshaft sprocket is two to one. So the crank will turn twice to one turn of the uh, camshaft sprocket. All right. So this is the strangest thing. I don't know why they just didn't do the P up there. But it doesn't make any sense because otherwise you're going to be out a little bit. I, that didn't make any sense to me. Because, like I say, where the keyway is there's a little piece so you put that on. But that meant that sprocket's upside down. Anyway, what we're going to do in this video is set the uh, valves and then we can just double check and put that uh, skew gear in. And I can turn this blinding light off. <laughs> Nearly all Land Rover engines, four cylinders, worked on the principle of the firing order 1342. Fords were a little bit different, it was sort of the other way around a little bit. But these have always stayed the same. Now, if you don't know what the timing is on a truck or a car engine or anything like this, on a four cylinder, and if the firing order is 1342, you can always work out this old fashioned way of timing an engine up. When these two valves at the back are rocking on the peak, on the two peaks of the cam, this is on the firing stroke. That means we can set the valve clearances of these two valves. Now I'm going to zoom in if I can onto uh, these two valves here and you'll see what I mean because I'm going to turn the engine over a little bit. So let's see if we can get a nice close-up of those rear two valves and all I'm going to do is just move the engine just ever slightly to and fro see see there on to and fro, see there they're rocking if this engine's rocking don't come knocking so now we can set the valve clearances for these two valves here. So let me get set up for that. We need the, a, a set of feeler gauges. The gauge setting for this is ten thousandth of an inch, hot or cold, inlet or exhaust. It doesn't really matter. Uh, ten thousandth of an inch, 0.254 millimeters. So we're going to back off the screws here. Stick our gauge in. Keep our spanner handy. And back this valve off because you see the seats have been cut and just ever so gently get the get the feeler gauge in just so it touches now sometimes when it's all oily and things like that a good indication is when it pushes the oil off the feeler gauge then you're set and you're good to go so now we've got that set we're going to put our key on our spanner hold the screw and give it a nip. It doesn't need much more than a nip. Now when you nip it, it sometimes puts a little bit of uh, 
difference on the the tension so that's come a bit loose so what we're going to do is compensate for that back the nut off again and just give it a little tiny bit more tightening and that's perfect all right we'll do the same with this one Ooh, that one's not too bad actually See? So the next one, so one, three. So what we need to do now is see when these two rock, then we can set these. You can do two at the same time if you see what I mean. It makes life a lot easier. Basically when these are on a firing stroke, these are at the opposite side letting the gas in and out, so that's why they'll rock. Um, the idea is when they, they slightly rock is that you get a fluid motion of air going through the cylinder so as the exhaust gases are going out down into the manifold and into the air and killing polar bears it's drawing new air, air charged with fuel in so as one's going out the other one's coming in it's just a slight momentarily overlap but it seems to work with the valves all set now Now I can concentrate on what I was doing. I was thinking about, I was miles away, I don't know what the hell I was thinking about. We're going to turn the engine till we see these two valves here rocking. Alright? Because this is where we put the skew gear in. Alright? Watch them very carefully. Like hawks. Right, that's going down. Watch it when it comes up. And the other one will start to go down there. Can you see? Right, that's its rock point. Rock on, Tommy. Oops, oh dear me, let's get that wrong, don't I? So that's its point where we put the skew gear in. And that's why we had a lot of problems. Because it says when you insert this gear, there is a master cutout. Yeah, you can see it right at the very top, look. Can you see it? Just in there. And that cutout has to point at an angle coming across here to this hole here, right? Now, that's easy enough. Just drop the bloody thing in. And that was the problem I was getting into before. And a lot of people have had that problem. If you, don't, if you haven't got the head on, you can't really see the point where this has to be in. So that means this is on its firing stroke, and if we look down here on the pulley, lo and behold, there it is on its firing stroke. That's on top dead centre. So we know that that's good, and that's where it goes in. Now, if you did it before using the P on the pulley, you'll get thrown out all over the place. It doesn't work. It has to work on the, the firing stroke. It, it puzzled me, but there again, I haven't, I haven't done one of these for a long, long time. I think it must be 15 years since I've done one of these. So what we're going to do is put this in. Now, the worst part about this is, well, just about everything. You, it's easier to put this in if you haven't got the oil pump drive in. If you've got the oil pump drive in, not only have you got to line the spline up for that, but you've got to line up the helical gears to mash, mesh with the camshaft and also line up the hole here for the bush because and naturally this turns so when you drop this down it's going to go like this and turn it does not go straight and parallel so let's get set up for that because i see my battery's going flat
Do you know something? This must be my lucky day. It went straight in. I not believe it. I don't know if we've been recording it because the thing went wrong. Now, the next piece that goes in is this little piece here. It's a little offset drive dog for the distributor. It's a bugger to do. It really is a bugger to do because uh, it tends to fall out. So I'm going to put some grease on this and take off the covering of heat, the, the cover and we're going to try and get it lined up. Right, seeing I'm on a roll, I might as well do this now. We put the offset so there's a shallow side which goes over here. I think. Is it? Yes. It goes over there. The clamp bolt goes at the back. That just guides it in place, but it's easier to put it in like that. Uh, we'll just no notch down these um, bolts that hold that on. I don't like that gasket, it was the only one I had. Because I kept taking it on, on and off all the time. But I've got plenty of grease on that gasket so it won't leak. No worries about that. Um, I'll just give it a nip with a gun. Now, if my calculations are correct and we put the distributor so that the uh, vacuum is at the back, that should point to number one cylinder. Ta da! See? Point straight to number one cylinder, the spark plug. That is brilliant. That's how to do it. After all, they made millions of these bloody engines, so they must have got it right sometime. And we'll put the little bolt back in, the keeper bolt, for the adjuster. And then, we're going to have a little bit of a break, because somebody's here. And then we'll uh, oil up the rocker shaft, put the cover on. And then, we can put the front cover on. Uh, before we do anything else, we might as well put the filter housing on and I'll show you a couple of things about this. The original filter housing on this unit here was um, a metal one, metal can, with the paper element in. They were awful, because you, you know, it was a real messy about trying to change them. This is off a of TD5. Um, I've disabled the uh, thermostat housing, you know, I've taken out the... Uh, little thermostat and the spring and the washer and I've put a plug in it, I've put a couple of plugs in it, now these are just temporary um, they were parallel threaded BSF, um, yeah no, not BSF uh, pipe thread uh, fittings, parallel and they had a copper washer that went on here well I've just put these in temporary because I can't find any plugs but it, it does exist. In fact, the, for the proper one, it had a, a, a parallel plug in here, pipe thread, and this one had a metal plate on. But I'm damn sure I'm not going to pay 32 quid for a bloody plate, or $32 for a plate. So I'm going to get the gasket, plunk that on. And this time, I haven't, I'm, I'm using a different product. I'm, I'm using this stuff here. This is Permatex fuel-resistant gas... Uh, gasket dressing and sealer it's very much like uh, Hylomar that we can get from the UK but it's exactly the same I used it the other day I was quite impressed you know it just softens up the gasket a bit and uh, makes it just that little bit of a sealer so put a little bit on and with your fingers just sort of do a little figure of eight there, smooth it around, get a nice even coat, and then we'll bolt this on. The rocker box is nice and clean, it's all been vapor blasted. Um, just remember there's a little copper washer goes behind this bolt here, there's a new o-ring in here, and a new o-ring in the filler. This may be a little di bit different to a series one, but that's all we've got. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure that that's nice and clean. 
clean that off. There's a little bit of oil on there and you'll see why I don't want any oil on it. We'll just take a little bit of brake cleaner. Just get that oil off. There we go. And I've got the gasket there. And we're going to, instead of putting a sealer on the gasket, we're going to put a little bit of sealer on our fingers and smear it round like this, look. And when it flashes off, like when it's lost its solvent a bit, when it's a bit more stickier, then we'll put the gasket on and that'll keep it in place. Now the beauty about this Hylomar type stuff is, although it says it's resistant to fuel, um, if you put too much in and it actually gets into the oil, it's not the end of the world, it's not like silicone. Where if it, if it dries and gets into your oil ways or anything like that, well, it's good night Vienna. But this stuff's a little bit better and I, I use it as a, it's used mainly as a dressing for gaskets. Not, I wouldn't put this on bare metal, it's just not good enough. This is where you need your RTV, your room temperature uh, silicone comes in. So a little bit, because it's easier doing it like this on the than on the gasket. And you don't want it smearing all over the place. Well, not that, not, not that you can help it sometimes, but... There we go. But this is just going to cause it to stick. Now this is straight out the, the uh, packet. But there's no location uh, lugs on this at all, so that is all it's going to get. Now you can see this is not a perfect cut gasket though, you can see it's trying to fight back there. We'll leave it to, to settle. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm not going to put Oh, maybe didn't say that, I don't know. I'm not going to put another coat on this face. The reason for that is, when this engine started up, we might have to adjust the valves again. So we don't want it sticking, and we don't want to re uh, do it again, if you see what I mean. So the thing is that now this is stuck onto here, we should be able to lift the valve cover off without any detrimental uh, damage to it and use it again. And then we can put some sealer on it. So now... Get some oil. We're going to run it around all these tops of these valves. Now, notice on the tops of the valves, there was no caps like there is on the 200 TDI and the 300 TDI. There isn't any. So we'll put a little bit of oil, and just to give it a fighting chance, you know, when it when it turns over, we've already got oil in the tops of here. Put a little bit in the top of the balls there, just to, just to get it going. This is only a very light oil. And then, we shall put the cover on. Oops. Now just one last check, just do a visible check, make sure everything's okay. And that's that. Now, now I'm going to go and get the uh, caps. Uh, and put the top seals on. These little seals at the top were just a piece of rubber and a cap. It's very tempting just to keep squashing them, squashing them down. But you don't really need all that much. Just punk them on like that. Now I think there should be a copper washer going on top of there. Let me see. Well, there didn't seem to be any copper washers in the gasket set, but I've got these little ones here. It's just a nice size to put on the top under these acorn nuts. Just make sure everything's lined up. We've got one missing, naturally, because either this morning. Where is that going? Ah, see. Now there is some additional brackets to go on here to hold some hoses in, but again these do not need 
tightening down with an air gun or anything like that. They just need a nice even little nip, just like that, not like that, like that. That's all it needs. A little spanner, done. That's good. That's very good. Now we'll clean that off. Nice. There yeah, that gasket's gone on there really nice. So the next step, we're going to fit the timing cover at the front. Um, that's kind of easy. I've just got to clean it off because it's got a bit dusty. Mm -hmm.